I have officially given up on the Yuri on Ice movie. I've been a fan of the series since it first aired in 2016, and I've been making videos like this since 2020. However, with the events of 2023, I have no choice but to concede that it's become clear that animation studio MAPPA has absolutely no intention of producing Ice Adolescents in the near future. In case you missed it, here are the facts. Number 1. MAPPA has removed Ice Adolescents from its upcoming project section on its official website. Meanwhile, the website for the Yuri on Ice movie still exists, but it still hasn't been updated in years. Number two, this year, MAPPA CEO Manabu Otsuka gave an interview with Japanese magazine Compass and revealed there that despite the fact that Yuri on Ice was MAPPA's first ever runaway smash hit, the income that the studio got from it wasn't significant versus all the resources and effort that they put into the production. And since then, the studio has changed its direction to pursuing projects and making investments that are more profitable. What does that look like? The success of Yuri on Ice as well as other series like Zankyo no Terror and In This Corner of the World helped put MAPPA on, well, the map. And in the years since they produced these series, they have been able to bag absolutely insane projects like Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man at what is frankly a breakneck pace. Where major studios like Ufotable and Kyoto Animation would take on perhaps one to two series per year, MAPPA takes on an average of four to six, and that's been the case since 2017. Beyond the fact that this obviously raises questions about the working conditions of MAPPA's animators, it makes one thing very clear. MAPPA has too many cash cows to stop and take on the risk of a Yuri on Ice movie, a project that didn't actually make them that much profit despite its fame. But beyond that motive, here's one more fact that definitely has gotten in the way of the movie. Number 3. The Russian Invasion of Ukraine I will not recap world events for you, but the fact that two out of three of Yuri on Ice's main characters are Russian definitely does not make marketing and selling this movie to audiences any easier. Japan has taken a very pacifistic stance on the war, and on top of the doping scandals at the most recent Winter Olympics, current sentiments regarding Russia are a threat to the actual turnout of people who come to see the Yuri on Ice movie domestically. Back to something much closer to the production, number 4, director Sayo Yamamoto and co-writer Mitsuro Kubo have fallen off the face of the earth. Sayo Kan has never had social media to begin with, so her silence doesn't necessarily say much. However, the fact that she has had no major projects since Yuri on Ice is extremely concerning. So was Kubo Sensei deleting her Instagram early last year and going almost completely inactive on both her Twitter accounts. Kubo Sensei dropped off the map right before Yuri on Ice's fifth anniversary celebration with Mizuno. Original character designer Tadashi Hiramatsu drew the official illustrations released for the collaboration, and while we would have expected illustrations from Kubo Sensei as well, we got nothing. And she was once the series' most active representative from its creative team. The absolute silence just freaks me out. Not just because it impedes the Yuri on Ice movie's development, but also because of whatever may be happening to these two very talented women behind the scenes. Number 5, and finally, the most obvious thing we need to consider is that it's been 7 years since the Yuri on Ice anime aired, and almost 6 years since it was announced that there would be a movie at all. Since this announcement, MAPPA has only ever released one proper trailer showing any material that could be used in Ice Adolescence. And the circumstances for that trailer's release were kind of sketchy to say the least. But beyond this completely on their own, MAPPA hasn't really done much to promote the film or even give a clue about its development. Most, if not all, activities or promotions regarding Yuri on Ice have been due to complete third parties that don't actually have any ownership of the series. Most recently, that was Toshiyuki Toyonaga, who was Yuri Katsuki's voice actor, and he released a mini album called Character Dancer, which is full of songs he wrote lyrics for and composed dedicated to important characters he's voiced in his 10 years of voice acting. 
One of these songs is Wings on Ice, which is explicitly dedicated to Yuri and actually sounds like it could be used for one of his programs. Toshi deliberately dropped this album on November 29, Yuri's birthday. I do hope you give it a listen. It's quite a heartfelt song and we know the character means a lot to Toshi simply because he put a lot of himself into it. The undisputed savior of the Yuri on Ice series has been, surprisingly, sports brand Mizuno. On top of the fact that they haven't failed to celebrate Yuri's birthday for the past three years, Mizuno is the driving factor behind Yuri on Ice's fifth anniversary celebration in early 2022. They produced new merch in time for the Winter Olympics and made it possible for us to get three brand new illustrations by Hiramatsu, which I must stress is the only post-series content we've ever officially gotten outside of events like Yuri on stage. This is the only time we have gotten a canonical glimpse of the characters' lives after the events of the series. And I get the impression that it never would have happened had Mizuno not put money into this collaboration. I would also like to note that this is also not the first time that Mizuno collaborated with Yuri on Ice. And you know, that kind of implies that they've made a tidy profit off of Yuri on Ice, which is an interesting counterpoint to what Mappa has said about earning money from it as well. But before the Mizuno collaboration, singer Dean Fujioka was the first to stir the pot in 2021 when he released a brand new version of History Maker to commemorate five years since it was released. Just this year, he literally performed History Maker in an actual ice rink at Fantasy on Ice with one of the actual inspirations for the Yuri Katsuki character, Yuzuru Hanyu. I mean, that's insane. Don't you think that's actually insane? The fact that this happened at all in an official profit-generating event tells you that Yuri on Ice seven years later still holds a very special place in the heart of the worldwide ice skating community. So really, since 2021, a sports brand, a voice actor, a pop singer, and a figure skater have done way more to keep Yuri on Ice alive than MAPPA has since they announced it at all. That already gives you a picture of the level of commitment that MAPPA has to the project. And if the erasure of ICE adolescents from their upcoming project section is anything to go by, then that level of commitment is pretty much zero. Annoyingly, however, MAPPA also appears to not have any intention of allowing other studios to have Yuri on ICE. My theory is that they'll never let go of Yuri on ICE. I think the possibility of it being produced and released still exists, but at minimum, it's going to take years and years and maybe even a few severe deal-breaking controversies for MAPPA itself before they turn to Yuri on Ice as a final resort. The very sad thing about Yuri on Ice is that it never actually needed a movie. As much as we might want to see more, the series ended on a satisfying note, with a relatively open ending that threaded nicely with Yuri's line that no tale is more compelling than one that never ends. If we pretend that MAPPA had never made the announcement, then it wouldn't have been that hard to just accept it and leave it there. But whether we like it or not, the studio has its own priorities, and we are wasting our time begging them to take on ICE adolescents when it's clear that they're only going to produce it on their own time. For now, the only thing we can do as fans is to keep the conversation going. Stay vocal in public platforms, keep reading and writing fan fiction, cosplaying, making videos, keep supporting or sharing official collaborations as they arise. I mean, if Cardcaptor Sakura could get a sequel 18 years after the original anime ended, then there's always some hope. Yuri on Ice is and always will be a work of love. And from Sayokan and Kubo Sensei's hands, the work of making sure it stays relevant and remembered falls to us. This is Anne from Omocha Reviews, and I will definitely be back again when there's more to say about Yuri on Ice. Until then, you can subscribe or you can simply like and share this video. Either way, it would mean the world to me. Until next time, goodbye.